let's talk about how to do this journaling thing because some of you guys struggle with journey journaling and that's totally okay i've always been somebody who appreciates journaling it's not something that i do every day i've done all different kinds of journals um i did not i meant to bring up with me to show you kind of a couple of my journals but it doesn't really matter because all of you guys have one and you're doing something different and that's fine here's a couple things that i want to ease your minds or maybe give you guys some new ideas for something you could try that's different Okay, so just because you've always done it one way doesn't mean that you shouldn't try to do something different and you might find something else that you like. First of all, I wanna say, with if you are an introvert or an extrovert, journaling is for you. And especially in your marriage, it is probably the number one thing that I recommend to couples because we tend to marry our opposites. Introverts tend to marry extroverts for the most part. And so when I have a couple that's struggling with communication and conflict, um, I always see that extroverts are the ones that are like talking forever and chasing the introvert down the hallway to, to end the conflict and the introverts like running away, trying to get time by themselves. So like, I don't know what you guys are. I'm an introvert. So I'm like, I just need time to think. And I just need time to find my words and I need you to leave me alone. Right. And the extroverts like, I'm not done talking. Like we got to settle this. And I'm like, I, I need you to not walk away. Or if you're going to call a timeout, you better call a time in. And the introverts like, I'm gonna call a time in three days later, right? And I don't know about you, but as an introvert, this is gonna make the introverts feel so much better and the extroverts are gonna be like, oh. So you're gonna love this. Introverts, we tend to have conversations in our head and that at the end of the conversation, we think we said it out loud and we never did. I literally was out with my husband. This actually happened this week. Obviously there's so much going on this week, but we were sitting out for breakfast or something like that. And it was just really quiet. And I didn't even realize it was quiet because I was having a full conversation in my head. Like I was thinking about having a conversation with my son and then what he would say and then what I would say back and like working out this whole thing in my head. And then suddenly my husband's like, Hey, what you thinking about? <laughs> And I was like, oh, did that, did that not happen out loud? Because I, it was very loud in my head. So extroverts need to process things out loud in order to find their words. And so what typically happens in an argument is the extrovert is trying to find their words out loud and the introvert is trying to find their words inside. So what happens is the extrovert says all of, I'm gonna, okay, so Brene Brown, if you like Brene Brown, she calls the first draft the shitty first draft. Yes, I cussed, but that's what Brene Brown calls it, right? So what happens is the extrovert says, I'll say it one more time, the shitty first draft. And what happens is the introvert, like that's all we heard was the first thing the extrovert said out loud and we can't think of anything else. And so in our minds, we start looping on the worst thing that they just said and we stop listening to everything else after that. Like the extrovert is still talking and still talking. And then they're like, are you even listening? And then we end up fighting about that first thing that they said, right? Because we process information so much differently. So I tell couples all the time, listen, if you are, es if we're escalating in conflict, both of you need to call a timeout and go journal because journaling helps you find your words. The extroverts get the chance to like talk it all out and get that first draft out so it doesn't hurt somebody, right? And you can get it out all on paper and find your words at the end and bring that second, third, fourth draft back to the time in, right? Right. So the introvert helps them slow things down where they can find their words and actually have something to say, okay? So when you find yourself escalating, journaling is a huge thing that it doesn't matter if you're extra extroverted and processing information out loud, or if you're an introvert, journaling is a great strategy, okay? You will always find your words by the end, even if you don't feel comfortable with journaling. Here are some different types of journaling. Number one, some of you, um, a prayer journal is really helpful where you can actually write out your prayers. Remember, we're getting outside of ourselves. You can start off by praying for yourself if you want to, but there's something about praying for someone else that exercises that gratitude. Even if you pray about the negative stuff first, you'll find yourself in a place of gratitude towards the end. You can write about your thoughts as you have them. So those of you who struggle with journaling, who like your brain is all over the place, that's mine. 
sometimes I just have to take a moment to journal and it doesn't have to make any sense. I'll go from like sentence to sentence and they don't even connect. I just have to get all the words out on paper and then I can figure out how they all go together. Okay. So whether that is you writing out just thoughts and phrases and not worrying about them making sense, that's, what's great about a journal. Nobody's going to read it, right? It's just a place for you to write. You can do it that way, or you can do just words, right? Just get all just like one words out on a piece of paper, just to get them out. It doesn't have to make sense. That's still journaling. Okay. Some of you are creative writers. You can write in a story or narrative form. So some of you can write out your story, um, you can write out a fictional story that kind of like superimposes your feelings and your thoughts. I am not that creative, but some of you guys are, right? And that works for you. Um, I have written a book and it is very cathartic. Um, I've even tried um, just for the fun of it, writing a fictional story. And I find myself bringing in these themes of things that I have wrestled with or that I've struggled with, but writing it through a fictional story. And it's a really great cathartic way to put it in someone else's life and kind of zoom out like Google Earth and go, how would I want that character to actually address that issue, right? It's a totally different strategy that's really um, creative for some of you. Some of you don't even get like, you just don't have time for that, right? So doing a bullet journal um, that's just a list of things is totally fine. Just don't even try to make it make sense. Just get stuff out and put it in list form. Some of you are very talented with drawing and doodling. I meant to try to get a picture for you. Sometimes when I do things like Mill Spouse Fest or when I'm doing a keynote, I'll ask people to share on social media like like share with me an image or a picture of the notes that you took. I've seen some of the most amazing um, pictures and images of people just actually processing their feelings through pictures and doodling. That's also journaling, okay? A couple other things you can do it digitally. Um, I love um, Evernote is an app that I can have on my phone or on my desktop that I can use as a journal. The only thing I don't like about Evernote is you can't password protect it, but you can password protect things like a Google Doc. You can even use a Word document on your computer and put a password protection there so that if you want to have a journal that's nothing but your brain dump of negative emotions that you don't really want anybody to ever read, it's your first draft. Um, having a password protected journal that's just for the negative stuff is a great idea too, right? Password protect it or write it and trash it, right? Um, so you can do it digitally. Um, but Evernote or having an app on your phone, if you're like, I've been known to sit in my car waiting for my kids for an activity and I just needed to process something and I was able to put it in my phone, but I'd have access to it later and came back to it. And that was really great. And then of course, just the regular handwritten using your favorite journal, having a journal that you really love. And here's what's key is having that pen. That's just amazing, right? Even if you have to go to like Office Depot, they probably won't let you touch all the pens now, but you guys know what I mean. Like you have the right pen, um, makes all the difference in the world. When I used to wait tables, way before we were even in the military, we used to have what was called money pens. I'm not joking with you. We would go out and test the best pens. And I had this pen that would light up because I worked in a really nice restaurant where they, like it was dim lighting. And I had this pen that you could light up. And, and every time somebody would go to sign the tip and sign um, the bill, um, when you had a money pen, they always tipped you more because there's something about having a great pen. So um, some of you guys, you can take a quote, you can look up a quote, you can just say, you know, what's my word? Resentment, right? So you can Google quotes on resentment, pick the quote that stands out to you and journal from that, pick a scripture verse and then journal your thoughts from that. You can also take at the very beginning of your journals that you guys just got, what you could do is make a list in the front first page, if you will, or if it's the second page, whatever, and just keep that as a running bullet list of all the things that you can be grateful for and keep coming back to adding to that list. And then each day, go back to that list and pick something off the list for you to journal on as a prompt. Does that make sense? So like first page, just bulleted list, and you can add to over the next couple months, anytime you feel grateful for something, add to that list, right? And then each day, pick from that list writing why you're grateful as your journal journal prompt okay um all right so freehand here's my last little bit of advice before i give you your prompt in case this works for you or helps you okay if you if none of those work 
you can start with a word that's floating in your mind, right? So if you had a word that just has been rolling and you don't really know why, but it's just looping in your mind and you just keep coming back to it. And that might be a great way to just start with that and prompt her to just write, what are my thoughts on appreciation? It's rolling in my head. I'm just going to write randomly about that word. So if there is a word that's been rolling around in your mind lately, then use that. I have a phrase. I think it's going to be my phrase for the deployment. Matt and I work with mottos and phrases, especially when we spend time apart. One deployment was a phrase, um, make it count. Like if we were going to spend time apart, how are we going to make each day count? There was another time that we said, um, get better every day. That was our phrase. Like whatever we're faced with, however difficult it is, we're just going to get better every day. You could do that as a journal prompt. My phrase right now that I've just really been loving is the phrase, um, do good, be better. That's my phrase. And I think that's going to be my phrase for my deployment is like, I want to be about doing good on a daily basis. And how can I be better each day? That's what I'm going to focus on. Um, so is there a topic that you've felt stuck on lately? Is there an issue that's really bothering you lately and you just feel stuck in it and you can't move forward? That's a great journal prompt too, right? Just write the topic at the top of your page and just start writing freely. Doesn't have to make sense. Just get stuff out. Okay. Is there a picture in your mind that feel, you feel stuck on? Is there an image? Some of you guys are very futuristic and you have pictures in your head of where you want to be or where do you want your marriage to look like, or there's just this image in your mind, right? Draw out that image, write out that image, and then just start writing. What do you think that's about, right? And just start using that as a prompt. And lastly, start with a feeling word. So if you don't know where to start, okay, start with a feeling. Um, I have, I didn't, I don't have it to show you for tonight, um, but um, I have, I do have, if you get my newsletter, and if you don't get my newsletter, then you'll get it when you sign up for my newsletter, there's a feelings wheel that's wonderful um, that you can look at the feelings wheel and figure out what word you're feeling and then use that as a prompt, right? But even if you just start with sad and then start, why am I sad? Let me like write that out, right? Or I'm resentful or I'm um, nervous, right? And then just start writing, what, why, do you, why do I think I'm nervous, right? Start with a feeling word if you're just in doubt and you don't know where to start, okay? Everybody ready? Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna give you a journal prompt um, I'm giving you four different choices on what you can journal, okay? So I'm gonna give you guys five minutes. We're gonna go quiet for five minutes. I'm gonna find a song that I'm gonna play on my side because there's something about music and not being like dead silent. But I'm gonna give you guys five minutes to choose at least one of these prompts that I'm about to give you for you to journal. Here's your options. Number one, you don't have to do all four of these, okay, guys? Number one, you can journal about an opportunity, opportunity to serve that you are thankful for. That's one of your prompts from the November prompts that you guys are going to get. An opportunity to serve that you are or were thankful for. Did you get a chance to serve someone or serve in your community, serve the village, serve a friend, serve your kids, something like that? Number two, I'm giving you a quote. Okay, so here's a quote. If this stands out to you and you like it and there's something that just kind of hits you with it, then use that one, okay? It says, enjoy the little things for one day you may look back and realize they were the big things, okay? So if you love it and it just hits you, journal on it, okay? Number three, what's one word that keeps popping up in your mind? And number four, if all else fails, I want you to do that bullet list of all the things as fast as you can, all the things and people that you're grateful for and why. So just put like a name and just a real quick phrase of why, okay? And see how many you can get in a bullet list and give yourself the time.